Hello, my dear friends. So today I am going to discuss a question from the fatigue loading chapter of machine design subject. I framed this question in such a way that it will cover the two previous year questions. One question from the gate, other one is from the civil service paper, one of the very oldest civil service paper. And this question is given in the gate two times now. But in the gate paper, it is asked to find out the factor of safety by using the Goodman's relation. But here I have mentioned it is about now by using modified Goodman. And most of the textbooks, they are going to give a one factor of safety. But here two factor of safety are given. One factor of safety with respect to fatigue failure. One factor of safety with respect to static failure. So those who are going to be thorough with the concepts. So directly read this question and solve it. Then check it now. Meanwhile, I will also try it. I will also do this question. Then you can compare your answer with my answer now. And I frame the options in such a way that four different students will give the four different options are possible. In the MCQ question, only one answer is correct. But the 90% of the students, they are going to get the incorrect answer for this question. This is a speciality of this question. Four options are possible. A is also possible, B is also possible, C is also possible, D is also possible. But only one answer is going to be correct now. Now, now I am going to read out the question. A thin spherical pressure vessel. A thin spherical pressure vessel is given of diameter 200 mm. Default diameter means inner diameter. And thickness is given 1 mm. Is subjected to internal pressure varying from 4 to 8 megapascals. The pressure is fluctuating from 4 to 8 megapascal. Therefore, maximum pressure is 8, minimum pressure is 4. Assume that yield. Yield strength is given, ultimate strength is given, and endurance strength. Yield strength, ultimate strength, endurance strength. Default, it is considered as a what now? Corrected endurance limit. It is 600 SYT. That you are writing as a sigma YT. Sigma YT is what now? 600. Sigma UT, that is SUT is 800 and corrected endurance limit that I am writing is the Sigma E 400. Now, factor of safety with respect to fatigue failure is 1.3 times the N. Factor of safety with respect to fatigue failure is 1.3 times the N, where N is the factor of safety with respect to static failure. So, with respect to static failure, the factor of safety is N and with respect to fatigue failure is 1.3 N. Then determine the value of N by using modified Goodman relation. Modified Goodman's relation. Most of the students, they are going to get a confusion. Two factor of safety are there. So most of the students are going to take the 1.3 N. 1.3 N they are going to consider. Then they are going to get the incorrect answer. Most of the textbook they are writing the Goodman's equation is KT into Sigma M upon Sigma UT plus KF into sigma V upon sigma E less than or equal to 1 by N. That is not the actual equation. That equation is correct when factor of safety with respect to static failure and static failure both are equal. But static failure and static failure, the factor of safety are different. This is the speciality of this question now. So the students who have attended my machine design lecture, they can do it now. But most of the textbooks, they are writing the equation only one factor of safety. But here two factor of safety are there. That's the speciality of the question. So to save the time, I have written the input data. Inner diameter is 200, thickness is 1 mm, maximum pressure P max is 8, minimum pressure is 4 megapascal, yield strength SYT. In plus of SYT, you are writing sigma YT 600, ultimate strength, corrected endurance limit N2. I am calling the N2 the factor of safety with respect to fatigue failure is 1.3 N. And N1 is the factor of safety with respect to static failure is N. Determine factor of safety by using modified Goodman. So whenever you ask the modified Goodman, first you have to do the Goodman's relation and Langer's equation. Then you are getting the two factor of safety. Then whichever the smaller you have to take. Therefore, you are going to get the two values for the N. You have to get the two values for the N. One value by using the Goodman's relation. Other one is by using the Langer's equation. Then finally, you have to consider whichever is the smaller. That will be the value for the end. 
KT, theoretical stress concentration factor in the question is not given. Anything is not given regarding the discontinuity. If nothing is given, there is no discontinuity. The stress concentration factor should be considered as 1. KT, the theoretical stress concentration factor 1. And KF is the fatigue stress concentration factor. That is also 1. If an object examination, if nothing is mentioned, you have to assume that there are no discontinuities. Then there is no stress concentration. And KT and KF are 1. Now, you have to use the actual Goodman's relation. Actual Goodman equation. What the actual Goodman equation now? KT into sigma m upon sigma ut divided by the n1. Because sigma ut is a failure stress for the brittle materials under static loading. So sigma ut is about now. Sigma ut is the failure stress under static loading. Then you have to, to get a permissible stress, you have to divide it by n1. Then Sigma E, the failure stress under completely reverse loading. Then you have to, to get a permissible stress, then you have to divide by the factor of 50 N2. So to save the time, I already written the equation also. So this is the actual Goodman equation. Kt into Sigma M upon permissible stress sigma ut upon n1 why you have divided with the permissible stress for brittle material under static loading how to get a permissible stress now failure stress divided by the factor of safety sigma ut upon n1 then kf into sigma v and this is what now permissible stress for completely reverse loading how to get a permissible stress now failure stress what the failure stress for completely reverse loading now sigma e upon n2 so this is what now this overall term is about a permissible stress with respect to completely reverse loading and the permissible stress with respect to static failure this is the actual equation those who know the equation they will get the correct answer now but most of the textbook they are going to write this equation most of the textbooks, 90% of the textbooks, they are writing this is a Goodman equation. But this equation is valid when, when N1 and N2 are same. That the factor of safety with respect to static failure and static failure are equal. Then this equation is valid now. So this is a Goodman equation. Most of the textbooks, they will write down this is valid when N1 and N2 are same. That the factor of safety with respect to static and static failures are equal. And this is a Langer's equation. Langer's equation. Sigma m upon sigma y t is the failure stress for ductile material under static loading. Then you are divided by the n1 because the permissible stress. To get a permissible stress under static loading, you have to divide by the n1. Kf into sigma v, once again, this is what now? Permissible stress. To get a permissible stress, you have divided by the factor of safety because sigma y t is about now. Failure stress for ductile material under static loading. So once again, if N1 and N1 are equal, so this is a Langer's equation. This is a Langer's equation. So first, what do you have to do it now? Here, you have to use this equation now. So by using these two equations, you will get the two values for n. But those values are n are the maximum values. Then finally, you have to take a smaller value, you have to take it. So which data you have to take it? Now kt and kf are 1. Sigma ut is given, n1 and n2 are given. Now only you have to find out the mean stress and the variable stress. Since the spherical pressure vessel is given, then you have to find out the hoop stress. Hoop stress is what now? Spherical pressure vessels, pd by 40, pd by 40. So first find out the... Maximum pressure. Maximum pressure is given. Therefore, find out the mean pressure. Mean pressure is what? Maximum plus minimum by 2. That is 8 plus 4 by 2. 6 mega pascals. Next, variable pressure. Maximum minus minimum. So the variable pressure is 
वन थर्ड ऑफ वन थर्ड ऑफ द मीन प्रेशर सो नाउ यू कैन फाइंड आउट द मीन हुप स्ट्रेस डायमीटर इज टू हंड्रेड thickness is 1 so you are getting 300 mega pascals then automatically variable hoop stress is 1/3 of mean hoop stress because variable pressure is 1/3 of mean pressure now so it will be 100 that's all now you can substitute the 1 and 2 so from equation 1 From equation one, Kt is what now one, Kt is one, three hundred sigma ut sigma ut is eight hundred, and the factor of safety n one with respect to static failure is n. Once again, Kf is one hundred. And what the corrected endurance limit now four hundred, then divided by n two. N two is one point three n. So from this one you will get the one value of n. So you are going to get this value is one point four two eight. So this is the maximum factor of safety by using the Goodman's. Similarly, use the Langer's equation. From Langer's equation, sigma m. Sigma y t. Sigma y t. How much is given? Now six hundred. And factor of safety n. K f is one hundred sigma v hundred, and this is six hundred. So from this one, you are getting n value. So n value you are getting one point five. By using the Goodman's, you are getting one point four two eight, one point four two eight, and by by using the Langer's equation, one point five. These are the maximum values. Then finally, you should not go above this. Now, if I take it, one point five. One option is given. Option A, one point five. Some students are going for one point five. That is the incorrect now. If I take it, one point five. This this condition is not satisfied. The with respect to Goodman, the maximum factor of safety is one point four two eight. Means finally you take the smaller of these values now. So value of n. Equal to minimum of. About two values. So it will be but in the question is given up to two decimals. So one point four three, one point four three. Now you can see the options now. Now, if you can see the options now, option is going to be C is correct now. So, answer for the given question is going to be C. But some students are going for higher value, then they are going to get one point five. But some students are using the equation. Most of the textbook they are writing the equation. 
then they are going to get 1.23 they are going to get it if you use this goodman equation when n1 and n2 are equal in that case you are getting 1.23 all the four options are possible but the correct answer is going to be c 1.43 so this is a explanation for the given question so thank you one and all wish you all the best thank you